Okay, in this video, we're going to show you how to remove the rear wheel and then reinstall the rear wheel on a Harley Davidson touring bike. All right, to get started with this, you're going to have to take the saddlebags off. You're also going to need to lift the bike up into the air. Uh, so you're going to need a jack stand. Uh, for now, you can just leave the rear tire on the ground, but you are going to have to lift it up later. Um, you may or may not, depend on what type of mufflers you have, have to take your mufflers off. Um, I do uh, in order to get a, a socket onto this acorn or this cone nut. Um, when you get ready to torque it, you're going to have to use a torque wrench with a socket head. Now they make a special tool for this that uh, can go down behind there and then it's got a shaft on it. I don't have the tool. I'm not going to get the tool. I'd rather just take the muffler off. So that's, that's kind of up to you. The other thing we're going to have to do is we're going to take the side panel off because we've got to uh, uh, loosen the, uh, the brake lines when we take the brake caliper off. So to get started with taking the muffler off, you've got your muffler clamp here. We're going to take that off. And then you've got your, uh, your two support bolts back here. And then we'll slide the muffler off on both sides. The reason we have to do both sides is when we get ready to push this axle through, um, there's no clearance. It'll hit the muffler and it won't come out. So you, that's why you got to take both sides off. So we're just loosen that muffler clamp up real good where it moves. And then we're going to come back and we're going to take the two uh, uh, support bolts off the back. All right, once you get all the uh, supporting clamps off, we're just going to work that slip on off. You can see it's coming off already. There we go. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Okay, then we're going to remove our side panel. All right, so we're just going to unclip this uh, little clip there. There's another one here that just comes off. Save it for later. And you get your brake line out of that clamp. Okay, and then we're going to remove the brake caliper next. So I broke that loose. Now we're just going to remove our, our brake caliper by taking these two Allen bolts out. Okay, to get the brake caliper off, you may have to twist it a little bit because those pads are compressed onto the rotor because it'll hit your wheel. That'll decompress them. It'll push the uh, brake fluid back up into the master cylinder. You don't have to do it very hard, very much. And you're gonna leave this connected. You're not gonna take anything apart as far as your uh, caliper goes. And work it out underneath the uh, saddlebag support. And then you're just gonna tie it up and you can hang it off of your uh, passenger floorboard or your passenger peg. And that's where it's going to stay for the duration of the uh, rest of the tire video. Okay, now we're going to remove this E-clip from the rear axle. Okay, so on this side, this is your cone nut. You're going to need a big socket for this side. The other side has a weld nut on it. Um, it's, it's part of the axle. It doesn't come off the axle like the cone nut does. So you're going to need a either a crescent wrench or, or, or a big box wrench like this. And I'm gonna put that on the other side because when we, when we crank this to take it off, um, it's gonna prevent the, uh, the axle from turning so we can get the cone nut off. Okay, so on this side, this is your weld nut that's uh, part of welded to the axle. So you're just gonna put your big wrench on this side and that's what's gonna hold it while you take the cone nut off. Okay, so when you get ready to do this, you're gonna straddle the rear of the bike, <clears throat> grabbing both wrenches. You're gonna need a pretty big one to get that cone nut off. It is corked on there. go just break it loose until it'll come off with your with your fingers you're just going to take that cone nut all the way off okay so this is called an adjuster cam so at this point your drive belt is still adjusted to the correct tension so we've got to loosen that and by to, the way to do that you're going to put your nice big wrench on there and you're going to turn that axle that welded nut counterclockwise and you can actually see the wheel moving in a little bit as I do that until it's it stops making contact with this tab that's called a boss at that point your drive belt is now loose and we'll be able to remove that drive belt okay then we're going to remove our adjuster cam from the right side this does have a flat spot on it that fits onto the axle in a specific position. So we'll take that off. 
At this point, we're ready to remove the axle. So what we'll do is you can play with your jack at this point um, to get the tires to where the, the weight's not uh, fully on it. And once you get it just right, you can actually push the axle out with your, with your finger. We'll go to the other side and show pulling it out from here. Okay, now, when we pull this out, um, you gotta watch your saddlebag support, uh, depending on the, the bike that you have. If it's lowered, for instance, this might be in the way, and you pull your axle out, it'll hit the back of that. So on some bikes, you may have to remove your left side saddlebag support. Uh, mine is stock, so I don't have to. So we're just gonna pull that axle out. Just like that. Okay, now we're gonna take the caliper bracket off. <clears throat> Try to do this and keep my hands out of the picture. There we go. Set that to the side. Then here's your wheel speed sensor. So we're just going to pull that out and hang it off to the side. And at this point, we're ready to uh, take the belt off. We're going to push the wheel a little bit, and you have a spacer that goes in between your sprocket and your swing arm. We're going to take that out. It'll actually drop out. You can just roll your wheel forward a little bit and guide your, your drive belt off. Now at this point, we're ready to lift the bike up and pull the rear wheel off from the bike. This is why you need a bike stand because at this point, all the support uh, that the wheel provided for the rear of the bike is gone and the stand is what's holding the rear of the bike up. Before you get ready to lift the bike up, you make sure that you loosen your, uh, your secure strap, uh, otherwise it'll push down on the seat and you won't be able to lift the bike. So hold on to it. You can get some help if you want to hold the other side. Um, and then we're just gonna jack this up until the bike gets high enough where we can slide the tire out from underneath. So holding the bike, I'm just slowly lifting it up. And you see the tires kind of settling in there on its own. It's nice and easy. You're not putting any kind of stress on any of the components this way. There you go, that should be high enough. Okay, so we got the bike jacked up now, and we're gonna go ahead and take the tire out. We're just gonna kind of angle it and carefully pull it out. Okay, now before you take it into the shop to have your tire mounted, you're gonna to wanna to take your sprocket off. This also reveals the uh, isolator, and I just did a video on this recently, and this is what the isolator looks like. And what this does, it's rubber. You can get uh, polyurethane ones as well. These, these uh, tabs on your sprocket fit in between that. And as you have torque on the bike, it'll move and it'll, it'll absorb some of the uh, torque changes that uh, transfer into the rear tire and help you with a smoother ride. So again, uh, I show you how to measure the tolerance for this to know whether your isolator needs to be replaced or not. All right, so this is our axle. I've already cleaned it. Um, you're gonna wanna get it all cleaned. You're gonna wanna get all the old uh, anti-seize uh, lubricant off of there. Uh, you can use a cleaning solvent if you want to. I'm just using a shop towel. It's fine. Uh, you just wanna get it off. And then we're gonna reapply a light coating of anti-seize lubricant on here. Okay, same thing here on your, uh, on your sprocket. You're just gonna get in there. You're gonna clean it out. This you don't want to use a solvent on because these are sealed bearings. You don't want any of the solvent to leak inside of that. So you can just take a towel on this and clean both the inside and the, the inner bearing and the outer bearing. Same here. We're going to get through all the way through the, uh, the sleeve of the bearing on both sides and clean it up real good. All right, so we had the, uh, our new Michelin Commander 2 tire that we got from uh, GetLowered.com or Get Lowered Cycles mount and balance and now we're ready to uh, begin the process of uh, reinstalling it onto the bike. When you take your tire in and have it mount and balanced, uh, you'll, you'll probably, like I did, take your isolator out. So in order to reinstall the isolator, what you'll do is you'll mix up a little bowl of 50% water and 50% uh, isopropyl alcohol and you're just going to wipe that around the edges. That's the uh, lubricant if you read your, your service manual uh, that you'll use to uh, put, put it back in place. So you'll just wipe, wipe the surfaces down with it, like that, and then you'll put your uh, compensator or your isolator back in. Okay, it might be easier at this point 
to put your uh, anti-seize lubricant on before you put your sprocket on. So you're just going to you're going to wipe it on the inside the bore of the bearing and you're going to get it down inside of that sleeve as far as you can. And you're going to do the same thing on the, on the bearings of the sprocket. As long as you're using the silver anti seize stick or lubricant, that's all you need. There's different varieties and brands of it. It's up to you what you want to use. The service manual does call a specific type, but uh, there's a lot of manufacturers out there that make it. So there you go. So this is all, that part's all lubed up real good. Okay, again, make sure that this is uh, lubed up with your 50-50 uh, mix. install your sprocket and then you're gonna turn the wheel over and we still have to put the uh, anti-seize stick or lubricant inside of the uh, the rotor side okay then we take the axle and we're gonna put the uh, anti-seize stick on there as well okay so we got the tire ready to go now so hold on to this to your sprocket because it can slip out, especially since you've cleaned it up and um, lubricated it with the mix recommended by the service manual. So you're just going to roll it under there. Might push with your knee a little bit. And just kind of center the tire for right now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have to uh, drop it down and while we drop it down, we're going to have to make sure that we guide the belt to make sure it goes around the uh, sprocket on the other side. All right, you're, you may want to just hold the tire so it doesn't hit anything on its, when, you, when, you're, when you're going down. And I'm just going to ease it down a little bit, enough to where I can make sure that I've got some slack for the belt. Maybe a little bit more. And I just laid it on there a little bit. And at this point now, that we know the belt's going to go on, we're going to lower the bike down until the swing arm gets low enough so we can put the axle through the, uh, through the wheel itself. That's a little bit too much. All right. So now we're ready to put the axle in. I'm just going to get the axle started in there. Then you've got your, uh, your spacer. It's a real thin spacer. So reach back there and put that in then you can move the wheel around until you can get the uh, axle to go through the uh, through the rear wheel and there it went okay you might have to push the bottom of the tire because you've got to get the adjustment cam past that saddlebag guard there it went okay once you get it um, almost all the way through to where just the threads are protruding from from on the right side of the bike you'll need to stop because you've still got to put your wheel speed sensor and your caliper bracket on because the uh, axle goes right through the middle of both of those. Okay, before you do that, make sure that you get some uh, anti-seize lubricant and put it on the inside of that wheel speed sensor and get your caliper bracket and put some anti-seize on the inside of the uh, caliper bracket as well in preparation to put the axle through those two components. Okay, I just want to show you how this goes back together. There's a notch here on your caliper bracket and that fits over this plate right here. The wheel speed sensor, when it goes on, it's kind of curved. That curve goes towards the outside and there's a tab there. That little tab, it fits in this curve of your uh, caliper bracket. So when you uh, show it to you like this, so that's where it where it goes and that prevents it from turning and holds it in place. So that's how it's going to go on there and the axle comes through. So let's go ahead and put it all together now. So we're going to put it down here where the axle is and we're going to slide the axle just through 
the wheel speed sensor first. Then the cable for that goes through the bracket. So we're going to slide the bracket down here between the uh, swing arm and the wheel speed sensor. And you might have to push that back. I actually had it too far out where it wouldn't go. And that snaps into place. You got your cable here and it's coming out where it's supposed to. You just kind of hold it together, reach across the other side, and you're going to push that axle through both of them. Until it comes out, just like that. And now you've got it, your tire basically put back onto the swing arm. Okay, now before we put the adjuster cam on, there's a flat surface on this axle. You're going to want to make sure that that's upwards. What that does is it puts the uh, it puts the cam, the adjustment cam, in a loose position for the belt. And then we're going to put our cone nut on. Before you put your cone nut on, you're supposed to apply a light coat of anti-seize on just the inside of that cone. And that will allow it to turn on there without jamming up on you for the adjustment of your uh, belt deflection. And you just finger tighten it for at this, at this time. Okay, after you've um, adjusted your drive belt deflection or tension, we're gonna put the uh, caliper back on. Now you can, you, can do, you can put the caliper on first and then do your drive belt deflection. It, that order really isn't critical on this point. This is also a good time to check your brake pads. Um, these are new pads, so I know I'm okay because I just put them on last month. So slide your brake caliper on there. And you're going to put your caliper bolts in place. Okay, once you get those snugged in there, you're going to torque them to uh, specifications. My bike in here is 43 to 48 foot-pounds. Okay, and your brakes are back on. Then we're going to take our wheel speed sensor cable and our brake line and put them back into the uh, clip that's on the uh, swing arm. And then we're going to take the little plastic clip that came with it and put, put it back on both cables. Okay, at that point your rear wheel is back on with your brakes. Uh, you're going to put your uh, E-clip back on to your axle. Okay, to finalize the insulation, if you took your mufflers on, off or your slip-ons off, you got to put those back on. Okay, then you're going to want to tighten your muffler clamp. Now, something that's kind of a side note on these muffler clamps is make sure that the muffler clamp is towards the front of the slip-on because there's some notches in the slip-on that allows it to close onto your header pipe and if it's too far back you won't be compressing those notches and it won't make a good fit and tighten down on your header real good torque that to spec there it is and that's going to depend on the manufacturer uh, specifications for whatever slip on that you're you've, you've got on your bike now before you uh, get too crazy about starting the bike up make sure you wipe any fingerprints and oils that you may have gotten on there because that can uh, burn permanently into the chrome and uh, you can't chrome polish it off or anything to that effect so just make sure that you uh, wipe them down real good before you start your bike okay go ahead and put your side, side panel back on and your saddlebags and you're done with uh, installing your uh, rear tire back on Okay, so that was the process of uh, install or removing and installing the rear tire on a Harley Davidson touring bike. Um, it's not that hard. It can save you upwards of $300, depending on the labor rates of a, of a lot of shops. So that's quite a significant amount of change in your pocket by being able to do it yourself. Um, also, be sure and visit Get Lowered Cycles at getlowered.com. 
for a full selection of uh, tires and tire accessories, isolators if you need to replace that isolator inside that rear wheel hub as well. Um, if they see something that they don't list on the website, call them. They can get you anything you want for the most part. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, be sure and hit the subscribe button and visit my website at ridethewings.com.